If like me, you grew up in North America in the late 80s or early 90s, this is what a Nintendo looks like in your mind. But for some people, it might look like this. This new style NES was developed by Nintendo at a time when the Super Nintendo was already out, and they were just trying to get more longevity out of their original NES library of games. To me, it doesn't even look like a Nintendo, but that's because I'm used to this. But for those who got this, and especially for the enthusiasts who track these down later, there are good reasons. This top-loading cartridge design is far superior. I've already cleaned this. I'm about to clean this and find out which NES I prefer. First, I want to see if it works. We have picture and sound and control. So our mission is more clear. Clean it without breaking it. Let's get started. This is a pretty simple disassembly, so I want to talk for a minute about why some people prefer this redesign. Simply put, the North American NES had design flaws that caused games to have trouble connecting over time. This top-loading design, which more resembles the Japanese Famicom, fixes that issue. Nintendo would never again use that front-loading cartridge system and children younger than me would never know that futile and ultimately destructive art of blowing into their cartridges to get them to work. Just want to squeeze in on these to remove them, as is common on so many of these consoles. This is all coming apart very fast, and we almost have it completely torn down. One thing I'm not going to disassemble is this port on the back. I would need to desolder this in order to remove it, and for the level of clean I'm doing and considering that it's working, it just isn't worth it. I will go ahead and take this bracket off. And we're pretty much ready to clean. Let's get our soapy water. Someone commented in my recent PS4 video that it was like a 20 minute infomercial for my electronic air duster, which is fair. And I think kind of hilarious. Good comment. I want to show you something here. I'm cleaning this like I normally do with isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. But see that? Oof. So I'm going to try another cleaning product here. iFixit's Precision Cleaning Kit. This swab is reusable and shouldn't tear like cotton. I'm noticing right away that I can fit it into smaller gaps than a cotton swab. So that's good. Now you can see I can drag it along these metal parts here and it doesn't grab or tear. Really nice. I'm going to try using it to clean some of the surface plastic here and I think it's doing a good job too. Although I don't want to use too much pressure with it because it does feel a little bit fragile like I could bend it. I'm going to go back to my regular cotton swab to clean up this flux because it's really sticky and I don't want to gum up my new reusable swab. 
This doesn't hurt anything and doesn't need to be cleaned off here, but I do like to do it just to make it look better. I am a little disappointed that this metal has no rust on it. I am looking forward to trying vinegar to remove that. For now I'll just have to settle for wiping this off with my microfiber cloth just to make myself feel like I did something to it. I have soaked these parts for about a half an hour in this hot soapy water. I wanted to give it some time to cut into that thick dirt staining on the surface. I don't know if you can see that on the camera as well as I can in person, but it definitely is getting a little bit of color change just cleaning this with my paintbrush here. Cutting through that dirt. This crack here was where it was really bad. I'm going to get my toothbrush with its shorter, slightly stiffer bristles inside the lettering here to clean out the gunk. One thing I would recommend doing different than me is not soaking this bottom part like I did because it looks like that barcode sticker got a little saturated. It looks like I am out of gloves. Time to choose a new color. Hmm, I'll go with pink. I decided to forego my BFF magic eraser today and try something a little different. I wanted to try cleaning these tougher spots with IPA and my cotton swab instead. So I'm again going to use a cotton swab because I'm going to probably use a little more pressure than I would want to with my nice new reusable swab. Looks pretty good. I'll just go around and get a few more of these spots on the surface. really stubborn spot right there. So I have learned today that it is possible to cause damage with IPA and a cotton swab just as easily as it is with a magic eraser. I can see a shiny spot where I wore into the surface. Disappointing for sure. But it confirms my opinion that Magic Eraser has a worse reputation in this field than it deserves. Anything can be harmful if misused. When threading a metal screw into plastic, I find it helpful to turn it backwards a bit first, and then sometimes that helps align the screw so that it goes in nice and easy, threaded as it should. Just going to help get that wire set in there so that our spring gate mechanism works.
We are at the end. Did we break it? Nope. Overall, this was a satisfying clean, but I haven't answered the question yet. Which system do I prefer? It's hard to overcome my nostalgia bias for the original North America design, but I would take the longevity and better design of this one any day. What do you think? Did any of you grow up with a different design than this where you live? Let me know in the comments, and we will see you next time.